Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Forbes Field, a place that used to bring great joy to the city of Pittsburgh. People watch great players make potential title runs. Now, Pittsburgh has one of the most beautiful stadiums, but the play on the field is anything but beautiful. It's difficult to say goodbye after. If you're looking at a guy who uh, spent three years riding the buses doing minor league play by play and grew up. Uh, as a huge baseball fan and always had baseball as his favorite sport and used to go to games on my off day when I worked at KDK. If they played an afternoon game, I would drive into town and sit behind home plate and watch a 12:30 game just because I loved baseball. I didn't see one pitch live last season, not one. Is baseball in a good place? And I'd be lying if I thought it was in a good place. The game's in trouble. It should be the thing that all eight-year-old kids want to go outside and play, so it, it's not that right now, so it's not where it should be. Goodbye, goodbye, walk away, it's hard to say goodbye. The status of Major League Baseball has left many with questions and concerns, including for former Pirates broadcaster, Lanny Terry. The major concern I have is that I don't believe the game has done enough to worry about two other aspects. One, the competitive balance of the, of the game, and two, the nurturing of young baseball fans. Viewership of the World Series has progressively gone down and will continue to if the MLB does not attract more young fans. Since 2008, the rating has been in the single digits for the Fall Classic, which is something that never happened before then. Are you a fan of baseball? No, I am not. Overall, not really. I rarely watch baseball. God, I love baseball. Regular season, no. Playoffs, yes. I am a fan of baseball. I've played it since I was younger, and you know, I really hope they bring the steroids back. No. Why? Too much of standing around for me. I think the games are just too long. They get boring at times, especially if it's a bad matchup. I do not like baseball. People think soccer is a boring sport. Well, they clearly haven't watched a baseball game then. Baseball is just really boring. It, you need to pay attention the whole time. As far as competitive balance goes, over the last 10 years, only one team outside the top 10 in market size has won the World Series. That being the Kansas City Royals in 2015. I don't know how to address this problem other than other than the union pursuing one of those grievances that they have against teams like the Pirates, like the Rays, like like the no, we know you can spend money 
and here we go. They can spend money. No, they can't spend $300 million, but they can spend $100 million. It is hard for those smaller market teams to compete with, with, the, with the no salary cap. Obviously, the prospects and everything are great, but at the end of the day, nine times out of ten, the team that has – the better players is, is probably going to win. But teams do not have a fair shot, the Pirates being one. Um, I wish there was a mechanism in play to force them to spend more. I wish there was a mechanism in play to force teams like the Dodgers or the Yankees or whomever to spend less. A cap system would make things more competitive for all 30, but it raises the question, Do you does the league really want it to be competitive for all 30? What do the Dodgers get out of it by evening the playing field for the Pirates? Absolutely nothing. The, the lack of competitive balance and the stupidity, I just have, I decided I have no patience for a league that has some teams that start with a distinct disadvantage. The Pirates the being one of them. Trips. Rips one high to right field. Will it be fair? A long drive! It's headed for the water! They have, for the 34 of the last 40 years, they have had losing seasons. The Pirates have become, this is a long time, 40 years, have become a source of misery. The Pirates' attendance numbers suggest that to be the truth. They haven't had a season with one and a half million in attendance since 2017 and haven't brought in two million since 2016, which is also the last time they ranked higher than 25th in the league in that category. The joy of having a contending, fun-to-watch baseball team every day. That's gone in Pittsburgh, and that's a shame. It's never coming back. It's been a long time since Pittsburgh has been relevant in baseball. About this long. And one man is blamed by many for this. I think one of the disconnects with Pirates fans is like they want something to match their emotional investment. And that's just not Bob Nutting. But is it his fault with no salary cap in the MLB? But let's think about this question for a moment. Who's the next pirate to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? Who from the late 90s and first two decades of the 20th, uh, of 2000s, of the last 25 years, who could possibly be a candidate for the Hall of Fame? If one thing is for sure, it doesn't take long to find the next Hall of Famer in other Pittsburgh sports. Roethlisberger goes down the sideline deep, and it is caught! The flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. That might have been a free play and a touchdown to Deontay Johnson. Everybody talking about it, Deontay Johnson against Alexander, and this was huge. He wasn't there last week. And two throws in that Cincinnati game were about a yard or two deep. And Ben Roethlisberger with a perfect dime. Ross, hard pass, the tag. Crosby opens, kicks around in front, back to Boston. Over Crosby, he scores! Crosby, 500! A sensational moment! 500 goals in one remarkable career! And so, the City of Champions has been just two for over 40 years. The Penguins have won five Stanley Cups, and the Steelers have won three Super Bowls since the Pirates last won the World Series in 1979. Since 2000, the Pens and Steelers have combined for five championships. That's more than the four winning seasons the Pirates have had in that time. So going back to the question of who the next Pirate grade is, I think the answer is nobody. Major League Baseball is dealing with a competition crisis, and the events after the completion of the latest CBA continue to just make it more obvious. The Cincinnati Reds traded the likes of Sonny Gray, Amir Garrett, Eugenio Suarez, and Jesse Winker away in a flurry of moves that clearly make the club worse, and the Oakland A's did the exact same, moving Matt Olson to Atlanta and Matt Chapman to Toronto, as well as Chris Bassett to the Mets. The new collective bargaining agreement sparked the return of America's pastime but for who? An international draft, pitch clock, and universal DH, among other changes, could slightly help the length of games and the downtime that baseball struggles to deal with. But did the core of the game change? The Pirates are not in a better position to compete than they were just a month ago, or a year ago, or since major payrolls separated themselves from Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Oakland, just to name a few. Now, they're arguing over less than $700,000 with star outfielder Brian Reynolds when the overall payroll is by far in the bottom five in the league. 
These teams do have the ability to spend money, but some of them just don't. The Rays did pay top prospect Wander Franco $182 million over 11 years, but the Dodgers completed a similar long-term deal with Freddie Freeman, making him the fifth or sixth big money contract on their books. Look, I love baseball. The game is unlike any other on a warm summer's night in the best ballpark in America. But something has to change. The NFL, NBA, and NHL don't have a competition crisis. Baseball's at the plate with one out in the ninth, needing a home run to win it and bring the sport back to its former glory. I just feel like baseball, you know, pun intended or pun not intended, like swung and missed here. You know, I'm not even sure they took a swing. A DH in the National League is by far the most monumental. I don't know if any of them are going to, if anyone is really going to make the game more watchable, potentially the pitch clock if it does speed up games, but I don't think it really will. It used to be your favorite sport. What changed in your mind that it's no longer is? Um, well, I, I just the stupidity. I couldn't take the stupidity anymore. It's amazing how baseball struggles to like look itself in the mirror and say like man this is dumb why do we do this you know or like man these games are really long these days are really long there are 92 transactions coming why are we doing all this you know there's there's never really an admission that like there's a better way to do things and to me until they admit that there's a better way to do things we're probably going to be stuck in this cycle I've gotten away with it because baseball's been around for so long People don't want to let go of it. And uh, I let go of it about, I haven't been to PNC Park since I think 2004 or 2005, and I'm never going again. The game has certainly changed over the years. I was raised to like appreciate good baseball. I've spent a lot of time watching old games, and I still love watching old games if I see them on MLB Network. It is like a foreign language compared to what the sport is right now. You know, you have balls in play. You have actual strategy. You have somebody going from second to third. You have maybe bunting someone over. The art of the stolen base. Pitchers throwing strikes. Um, it's boring. Frankly, it is boring what baseball is right now. And what baseball is now is nothing short of a strikeout fest. The league eclipsed 30,000 strikeouts for the first time in 1998 but now over 40,000 strikeouts seems to be the standard. Each of the last four full seasons went over that number. Growing just as quickly in the MLB is home runs. In the 1990s, under 2,000 home runs were hit four times. Now, over 6,000 home runs have been done as a league, twice. But Lanny for Terry has another big shift in the game in mind. One of the major concerns that I have about baseball is the length of games, the pace of games. Uh, when you consider that the 1960 World Series, the seven games between the Pirates and the Yankees averaged two hours and 30 minutes, and now we're finding baseball games going three hours and 30 minutes or three hours and 45 minutes. Games are longer now more than ever. The average is over three hours. Back in 1960, the standard game time was just over two and a half hours. But despite its flaws, many still love the game of baseball. Well, I think there's definitely a lot of ways um, that it is trending in the right direction and getting better. The game should be the number one sport in the country. It should be America's pastime. Keep in mind that, that I love the game of baseball. I do love baseball. You know, America's greatest contribution to <laughs> one of America's greatest contributions to the world. You know, I love when people say nobody cares about the Pirates. Like, that's such BS. You know, it, it's, it's garbage. Our top three most well-read authors this past year were our Steelers beat reporters. I don't have any issue with that. That's about what you would expect. Number four was me. So the idea that nobody cares is laughable because they do. The Pirates have scored three here in the bottom of the night. The Bucks have the tying run at first base. And a one-ball pitch. Giles swings, drive to right field. Buckos win by way of a grand slam. Brian Giles, a line drive, grand slam into the right field seats. Count them. Six, seven, eight. Giles makes nine. Bucks win. Nine, eight. There was no doubt about it. You know the beauty of this thing? And that this is good for the Pirates, it's good for baseball or whatever. If they win, they'll be fine.
And I've tried to tell anybody who will listen to this on Twitter or anybody I talk to, like, you can you can win if you're the Pirates. You absolutely can win by drafting, development. Um, there's nothing prohibiting the Pirates from, you know, going to find good players. Caught out there. Oh, Cruz just went down and lifts it to right. And O'Neal Cruz just effortless reaches down those long arms and lifts it over the right field wall three to nothing one thing about pittsburgh sports fans they will support a winner no questions asked and we saw it in 2013 2015 i guarantee you that if the pirates do the same they all those fans will come back We'll have to wait and see if that is true. But one thing we can all agree on is baseball is in more trouble now than ever before. What will the future look like for the MLB? I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that enjoy the view right now because who knows how long we'll have it and be able to love this game of baseball.